Hello, friends. Welcome to the live stream. Welcome to the channel. I hope everybody's having a great holiday season and looking forward to the new year. So, yeah, I said I was going to live stream today and we're here. So I have everything set up and ready to go. And I'm going to do um, a pattern in the bath here. I'm going to do a marbled paper. Uh, is my sound good? Do I sound good? Yes. Good. All right. So, yeah, it's our first live stream, so bear with us. Um, got my husband moderating back there, doing his thing, and uh, I thank him for that. Thank you so much. So, yeah, I'm uh, going to do a marbled paper, and uh, I have an example back here. Hopefully you can see it, but I'm working on this today. So this is a get gill pattern. It's probably kind of far away, but get gill pattern and some turquoise and teal colors. And then I have really subtle drops of gold on top. And um, so I'm making these for a client and they're gonna want approximately 50 sheets of this. So I'm going to get really good at making this pattern. Um, but yeah, that's one of the challenges of this art form is repeating the process, but you're not making a reproduction. You're just making an addition, kind of like printmakers do. So yeah, I have um, a little formula sheet that I'm going for here. My swatches. And I have all my paints ready to go. And um, yeah, they're gonna make an addition of fine bindings with those. They're gonna be end papers in a, in a nice leather bound book. Um, and I already have my colors set up. And uh, maybe some of you don't even know what this is at all. You have no idea what's going on right now. This is a tray of liquid gel. And I'm going to float paints on top of it so these are acrylic paints that I've thinned down and that allows them to suspend on the surface and it keeps them really light and open. And uh, I was hoping to do a test sheet before we went live, but it was running late. So I didn't even do a test sheet yet. So you're watching the test sheet right now. Um, so yeah, it, I might mess up. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, this is live. So that's what's, what's gonna happen. So I got everything at hand. I got to make sure I have it all ready to go because once you start the design, you want to go quickly as possible. And, you know, things are moving and floating and dissolving. You want to capture it as quickly as you can, but not rush or be hasty. So there's a balance there. So, yeah. So I got newsprint here, and I'm going to just clean off the top of the bed. That's going to remove any tiny little bubbles, debris, and get rid of the surface tension that's built up on top. And that's going to let our paints just float really nicely. So we did, um, while, while you work, we did a poll for whether people wanted to see combed or non-combed patterns. Oh yeah, the poll. <laughs> and I think I checked it right before we started. It was about two thirds out of 50 in favor of combed. All right. <laughs> but that does mean one third of people do prefer uncombed. Yeah. That's, Which is not an insignificant number, no, it and it got me thinking. Oh, yeah? Uh, I went and looked at some of the shorts and videos we have up. I think with the new camera, it's really up close to the, to the nice dots and the way that they spread. Um, and it looks really pleasing just to watch. Right. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, the dots are really mesmerizing. 
and peaceful. Well, those are some great observations. Thank you for the poll. Yeah, I have a dripping bucket here because there's carrageenan dripping from my tray, but I'll try to avoid that if I can. So yeah, I've laid down a dark blue background. And I'm just cleaning up the edges here. like a little skewer and I'm gonna get rid of these bubbles okay now I have this sort of teal color that I'm gonna start with and I have broom whisks that I'm going to apply so this is Starts out as a stone pattern that will get combed. Just a warning there, fair warning. And one of the challenges here is getting the spots to be not uniform in size, but equal as you can. Very tricky. I have my paints lined up in the order that I would like them in. I don't even have to remember what I'm doing. I can just focus on applying the colors. Getting rid of imperfections, which I see right here. Okay. Now don't forget, this is the first one. So I'm already seeing maybe I need to add some water to my paint. And it's just going to be a lot of tweaks. And for the client that wants 50 sheets, I'm going to print way more than 50 sheets and give them the best 50 because mistakes are absolutely inevitable here. Okay, so that was like a light green and now I got a deep turquoise. And the order of the colors matters. The order of the colors you're going in. So when the client approved the swatches, I wrote down everything I did very specifically. And so now I'm going in that exact pattern to replicate this. So the sheets in the edition aren't going to be reproduction matches, but they're going to be very close, as close as possible. Okay, let me go back to that turquoise color. I put a light color in between the layers. I'm going back to the turquoise because that's one of the most dominant colors that we want in this is this turquoise here. And yeah, you can see I um, have just some drops on the end of this brush and I'm tapping my finger and they're flinging off the end of this brush and hitting the surface of the bath and expanding. Now, here's the gold, which, wait, I gotta do the comb. The comb's coming out, guys. Here it is. I have a get gill comb, okay? So this is my paper tray get gill comb. And I'm making sure that 
there's no fuzz that's gonna ruin my day in these little tines. I'm just making sure I remember every little step and avoiding every little mistake that I can. So it needs to start exactly here, okay? And one swift motion, okay, and a shift. Okay, there you go. I think, yeah, the next one I'll do three passes. Uh, should I just realize that? But I think I prefer three over two for this. It just elongates those drags a little bit farther. Now, the gold. So, yeah, this is a gold, handmade gold. I made this um, with pigment and medium and a um, glass slab and a molar. So it gets the best gold. I can't find a good gold in a bottle. So now I have natural broom corn, which is going to be a little bit finer detail and shim, maybe to very a little more controlled here. Okay, and I don't, I don't want too much because remember, it's going to be subtle. So I dip and I actually like spread this out. And maybe even tap off just a little bit of the excess. Okay. And I don't know, you can see in the camera, but because this is going to be pretty subtle. Is that showing up on the camera, Alex? Can you see the gold? Not so much. It would have to be closer. Okay. Yeah, this is very, you want just to keep it subtle is actually really tricky. All right, this is it. Now I'm gonna get my paper. I'll be right back. And I even I took my gloves off because I don't want those to get in the way. And now I have this sheet of paper here with a pair of tweezers that I'm going to lay so I don't get a finger mark. and make sure every edge gets kissed to the surface. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also take my skewer and just make sure I don't have any skips. Hopefully, we'll see, we'll find out. It happens a lot, a lot more than you think. I try to make everything look so perfect on my videos and that's not, that's not what happens on a normal basis. They're all edited to look more perfect than it really is. Yeah, okay, let's see what we got. Are we excited? Is everybody excited? All right, yeah, here's my board. And I have a sprayer here. This is just water, regular water. And I'm actually going to spray the board a little bit. Just give it a good surface for the paper to come up on. Okay, yep, I got my paper clip or my, uh, whatever it's called, clothespin. Yeah. Okay. All right, oh, well, see that's all right for a good first one. Huh? It ain't bad, it ain't bad. 
Now, would you mind once you pin it, if uh, we bring the board closer to the camera oh, so yeah. people can see the gold? That would be great. Uh, just allow me to rinse first, I think. Rinse first. Um, yeah, I don't even, I'm not even gonna pin this one. It just landed so close to the top. I hope I don't regret that, but yeah. So this is just my sprayer and I just give it a light spray just to get rid of the excess carrageenan and sometimes some um, um, pigments that didn't adhere to the paper, just rinse away. Um, and I've treated the paper with aluminum sulfate, which is a mordant, which allows the paint to form a permanent bond to the paper. And that is why I get to rinse this without it coming off. Yeah, yeah, the gold paint turned out good. Hey, I didn't even test the gold paint. I, you know, that gets really tricky and finicky, so. Don't tilt it too far, the paper will fall. <laughs> yeah, doing good? Keep going? Well. Yeah, I have, to make, I have to make 50 of these. So um, yeah, I didn't plan on doing anything but this for, for this first live stream. Yeah, I know that's maybe not as exciting as it should be, but yeah, I, I just got to get my work done. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have plans to do more. Now we got cameras and we got mics. And so we're like all set for this and we're trying to expand and do some shows and it's pretty fun. We're having fun. So just keep it going. So yeah, this probably looks decent. It looks good, but you know, I still need to make tweaks to this. This isn't exactly how I want it to go. So like I said, just gotta keep going. And behind the camera, I'm gonna go put this on its drying rack that I have set up, which I'll show you guys someday. I made a drying rack. That works really well for me for marbled paper. Um, I don't really like to hang them right off the bat because you know they might like fall or get shooken or windy or whatever. But yeah, I just put them on the drying rack and they they hang out like this on on some drying screens. And then later I might hang it up to like give it its final dry. But I also um I put it on a piece of pellon pellon cloth um, pellon. Um, it's this thin, like, translucent cloth that's very soft that paper makers actually use in between their handmade paper sheets. Um, and I actually am doing that for the first time today for marble paper. So I had some leftover from my paper making days. And I thought that would be really good because um, it's going to really protect the backs of these sheets and try to keep them looking nice and durable. So I'll uh, just excuse me for one moment while I go put this on the drying rack. And we have Mr. and uh, Mrs. Peachy. Um, oh. They like the paper. They say it looks great. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, guys. Nice to hear from you. That's so sweet. Okay, all went well over there. So I'm just gonna keep making more. And until you get tired of it, I guess. <laughs> okay. Have to watch it with these new mics. Um, 
they can actually hear you drinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good to know. <laughs> try to keep it down there. Now I'm blowing my gloves. To <laughs> it's gonna sound amazing. <laughs> Just trying to re uh, reuse these gloves, guys. Uh, it's, uh, it doesn't sound as strange as drinking, so okay. don't worry about it. Well, yeah, I was trying to get a little caffeinated, you know. Maybe I'll get a little more talkative, share some more details. Yeah, this glove is not participating. Oh, yeah. Have you talked yet about the history of this pattern? Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, the history of this pattern. Now, the name of the pattern is Get Gil, which is the, in Turkish language, uh, means come and go. Um, or it also means the tides, the coming and going of the tides. So that name comes from the movement of the comb. When we're coming back and forth, Get Gil, back and forth. Also known as Gil Get. And there's um, just a little nuance there of how you start the comb. Now I'm trying to remember which way it goes, but it's said, legend has it, if you push the comb away from you and then return it, it's either called get gil or gil get. Or if you start the comb up here and you come towards yourself, it's one or the other. I can't remember which, but it's really fun. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Marbling is huge in Turkey. It's a very important part of their national identity. And that's where the word get gel comes from. So a lot of people ask, how do I clear this last bath? How do I clear the paint? And some people think I re reuse the entire thing for each print and no, that's not it. Like I'm gonna get dozens of prints out of this one bath. And that's done by just removing the top film, the top surface, with a sheet of paper, this newsprint paper. See, it just comes off like that. I get a clean slate. And any other residual stuff happening is either underneath the surface, or it's just going to get pushed out by the new paint that I'm applying on top. Here we go, we're back to square one. Now the Turkish style and techniques, I think are classified by um, UNESCO as a um, traditional or national art. I, I forget exactly what the phrasing is. Yeah. Um, and they do a bunch of crazy stuff too. There's a lot of, uh, I think they, pro they probably have apprentices, right? That they pass, pass these yes. down to. Right. They draw on the water. Um, There's specific rules for flowers or other designs that they print on them. Yeah, they have a formal set of rules. And um, if they're doing the traditional style, um, they're going to learn the rules of how those are done. And they don't stray far from that set of parameters. Um, and they have a completely different set of tools and materials um, than what you see here. Now, I use carrageenan as my gel in that gel that I was telling you about. Uh, so that creates a thick thickened water. It comes in powder form. So carrageenan is an Irish moss extract. Comes in powder form, mix it up in a blender with water, let it sit overnight, and it just gives this a nice viscous consistency. Um, but interestingly enough, other cultures use different sizing, it's called, size, the bath, thickening agents. Um, there's many other things that give you a mucilage. <laughs> um, honey locust pods was 
traditionally one of the first forms of marbling. And fenugreek, people use fenugreek. Uh, Metocellulose. Uh, guar gum, I've heard. Uh, oh, gum tragacanth, that was a big one, yeah. That's a lot harder to find these days. Have you mentioned agar-agar? Agar-agar, yes. That's a strange one, though, right? That one chunks up a little bit. Yeah, so. yeah, I remember that. I think we tried it at some point. Yeah, you can get cool patterns, but, like, you're not going to get, uh, like, the finely combed things. Mm-hmm. Okay, remember, three passages with the comb. Three, not two. That's my goal here. Don't forget one chatting and yakking. Okay. And I need to add some more paint and thin this down with water. So I'm over on my paint table over here thinning this out. And again, make sure it's really well mixed. That is key. Very key. Okay, did the green. Next. This sort of light green. So these are broom whisks cut off of the end of a broom or what you use to make a broom. Okay, turquoise. Turquoise. A light turquoise. That looks like a deep turquoise. Now I'm doing a little layer in between with a light turquoise. Happy little dots. Yeah, go back to the deep turquoise. One last time before the comb comes out. The comb's coming. Get ready. And, you know, I could print this in the stone pattern. I print the stone pattern often, yes. But right now, we're going to do the get-go. Because there's so many patterns to celebrate. So grateful. Okay. And my glove never even actually <laughs> readjusted, but I'm, I'm coping. Okay. Now here we go. Three, right? Don't forget. Three. And I start up there. Okay. One. Three. There we go. Now it's looking more like that, which is the final version, the final approval. Remember, I have to make fifty. <laughs> I, I, I'm not making them all today, so you know. But I'm just saying. If we'd be here for a while. <laughs> I might set a world record there. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll be like, that good. All right? Keep practicing. All right. 
right now. Good. Good. We got the gold. The gold is coming. And we got a fuzz as well. Let me get the fuzz out of there. That will ruin our day. But I'm just checking this brush very carefully because we don't want anything that's not gold paint landing in that bath. <laughs> Removing the excess. Now the shim just reminds me to not go too crazy. Because <laughs> I love gold. I love it. I would fill this whole thing with gold. <laughs> but the client wants it subtle. And I want to get that very, very right. Can't get too happy about this. Guys, maintain control. We don't want those dots any bigger than like a, a pinhead, I would say. A pinhead. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, YouTube doesn't allow DMs, but I know there's a common question on Instagram. How does the gold behave? Because I know it's it's tricky once the gold it gets on the surface um yeah if you use it out of the bottle it's going to expand out of control and probably not even show up mm. um so making your own with pigment and medium and on a glass piece of glass and a molar is the best um and I tried to keep this a little concentrated to keep the that subtle. Um, and also working on colored paper is really nice with metallics. Okay. I'm really trying to focus on getting this laid down just right just right no air bubbles no hesitation marks every edge gets covered no finger marks on the front no nothing on the back yes you do get stuff on the back. It happens, yeah. That's part of the process. All right, now just give it the swipe. Give it the final swipe here. Okay. Now what? See how we did. How do we do? Hmm. I think I'm getting closer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Closer. It'll look a little bit different when it dries, but yeah, so. I have a little too much of the light turquoise and I need more of the dark turquoise. Just a little bit more. It's looking a little lighter than I want it. But yeah, it's getting there. Now I'll give it a little rinse. My cool little pressurized bottle. Um, yeah, wanna say a quick thank you to Dan and Regina, St. John, of Chain of River Marblers. They're my teachers um, and my friends and I they've taught me everything. And I learned this at the School for the Bookbinding Arts owned by Jill Dice. Um, and she also runs Cattail Run Bookbinding, Hand Bookbinding. Those are all my educators and people that I thank every day, every time I come to the tray and I'm very grateful for them.
So I'm just spraying this with water. There's just a few little pigments hanging out on the top of the surface that didn't adhere to the paper. And that's okay, that happens every time. You just rinse those guys away. Because I've treated the paper with aluminum sulfate. that one bring it up just try to make sure it doesn't fall off the board <laughs> okay great I just got a lot of green paint on my arm <laughs> okay so yeah so that's that and I'm gonna go over to the other side put this on the drying rack and then I'm gonna come back and do one more print and close for the day on that live stream. But yeah, I'll be here for a long time making 50 of these. <laughs> and then for folks that are watching the recording, uh, we will be answering questions in the comments if you have any. And another thing I noticed actually is there's a lot of People watching this in Japan, Indonesia, Eek. India, and so we have um, native um, English and Russian captioning, but they're probably, if they're watching this, they're having to use the auto translation, which I know huh. doesn't convey well. Yeah. So if anybody out there is a native speaker who wants to translate the captions, uh, you'd be helping a lot of uh, other folks out um, really cool. let me know in the comments i'm hanging this very wet paper on my rack right now just bear with me try not to mess it up <laughs> most importantly Yeah, it gets a little stressful uh, once you have the paper printed and you're just trying to get it on the drying rack without ruining it. It's like one of the hardest parts. All right, well, I need a sip of tea. Do I just turn my mic off? <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Excuse me, guys. Uh, I need the caffeine. That's just the requirement. We'll get hydrated beforehand mm -hmm. next time. Yeah, I'll try. I mean, I, I need to drink tea. It's art and tea. It just goes together. You know, what are you going to do? <laughs> I think it'd be really cool for the next one to get um, an overhead camera so they could see your work and then just see the pattern forming side by side. Yeah, like... That would be awesome. You could flip between the two cameras. Like... We'll just have them side by side on the screen. Oh, like a split screen? And you'd yeah, have I mean, everyone's wide. watching on widescreen anyway. That would be awesome. Yeah, we could do one up there. and Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, so like getting all the camera equipment and setting up all the stuff. The mics, it's just a whole other game. It's like I'm just trying to do the art. And then to get it out there in our digital modern age is... I mean, like, well, yeah, it's a big deal. So you have to have all these skill sets. And so I thank my husband. Thank you so much for all the tech. All the tech. All the tech. Yeah, thank you. All right, I got, I need gloves. Just need some gloves. Same old gloves. Yes, you're probably hearing me put my gloves on now. <laughs> I don't really want to do it on camera. <laughs> uh, don't, don't get too self-conscious. <laughs> oh. Okay, now we got it. Goodness me. Okay, well, yeah, one last pattern for you guys. Another, hope you're having a good Friday. This is a very enjoyable way to spend a Friday at home. 
in my studio making some patterns. It's yeah, where I want to be. Just cleaning up these edges. Just trying to keep it very neat, clean. Yeah, so over the summer, Alex and I went up to Massachusetts to visit my teachers at their home studio, Dan and Regina St. John, and that was a dream come true, a real treat. Always wanted to go visit them up there. They usually travel to Jill's in Winchester, which is where I usually take classes from them. But yeah, we got to go and visit them this time and see their studio, and it was so, so special. And I always, always, I've taken, I've known them for like 10 years. And I take all their classes and I always, always, always learn something new every time. Lots, lots of new things every time. It never, never fails. You would think that you could learn everything. <laughs> then you can't. You're just going to keep learning. It's really, there's a lot more to it than maybe you think. And a lot of people can make it look easy. It's not easy. There's always advancements. Well, and whatever you're into, I think you should always work to keep improving. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, this one, remember, we're going to do less of the light color and more of that deep turquoise it needs to be more dominant. I say maybe by sheet number six is when I start getting the really happy achievement. It'll take six, at least six tries till I'm like fully satisfied. And then that's when I start messing up. <laughs> When you get the really good one, that's the sheet you drop on the floor on accident. <laughs> always, always. Oh my goodness. I could just cry. <laughs> yeah, and then one time my cat jumped on top of a sheet. Oh, my cat has ruined more than one sheet now that I'm thinking about it. But she jumped on top of a sheet and was hanging out and then just like bolted and scratched one of my really good papers. Oh, oh, that poor little cat, yeah. I'm not gonna tell you what else has happened because I don't wanna go down that road, but that cat has ruined a lot of papers. All right, so yeah, I'm just getting this background nice and even. There's a little bit of surface tension right on this edge here. I'm gonna move that. It's gonna make the paper really cleanly printed and give me enough space to get all my colors down and not compete with each other. Because the paint is a film, a singular film on the surface. And that that's your matrix that you're printing from. It's like printmakers have a matrix, their printing plate. This is our matrix and it is a form of printmaking. Because you're transferring an image from a matrix onto a substrate, a sheet of paper. It's just the definition of printmaking, but it's a monotype print. Meaning you only get one at a time, one going to be slightly different each time. Um, I actually have my degree in printmaking. That was kind of my first love. Well, actually, I loved marbling before printmaking, but I couldn't fit into that little square category. I just wanted to be a marbler, but what? That sounds crazy, right? Like, who does that? <laughs> So it took me a while to uh, accept it. 
Um, but yeah, that's I've tried printmaking. Um, and I love printmaking. I do, but it's just not the same. Don't get me wrong. I love printmaking, but yeah. Okay, less of this, less. See, it's coming out too, yeah, too big. So I'm gonna rinse this brush and get less. That's part of the problem. Maybe it needs to even be, hmm, yeah, see that, that's too much. And actually, I'm even gonna take that out. I wanna see how that goes. <laughs> Take a little bit of that out. See, it disappeared a little bit, right? I don't want that so much. Okay. Now, just a little bit. I had too much in my brush. That was part of the problem. That's better, 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 yeah. Smaller size stones was what we're going for here. You need smaller size. Yeah, I loved, I really loved etching in print making. I could have gotten early into that. Um, had marbling not taken over, etching was amazing. Maybe someday again. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, this is the dark turquoise. This is the dominant color that we want. Yeah, this is the good one. And I don't want to submerge my brush. I just want to little drops right on the tips. Oh yeah, I'm loving this. This is good. All the little stones are small size, small. Yep, these are getting too big, but that's okay. We're tweaking here. This is our third print, our third print. So, small, light. Small and light. And I really do love this stone pattern. And if I was making some sheets for myself, I would probably print this, but I never make sheets for myself. <laughs> I don't get to do that very often. I only get the defects. I barely even own any of my own scarves. <laughs> okay, now we're coming back with this turquoise, right? Okay, turquoise. And this is the dominant one that we want but we still want to keep them small. Happy little dots, small. Yeah. Good, good, good. Going well. Just making sure I don't have too much of that light. We want this. But the light provides a little highlight beneath the dark and gives it dimension and contrast. But we want this mostly this turquoise color, right? Yeah, there's still one, one little guy there. I just go away. Go away. Saying good. Okay, here comes the comb. The comb, the comb. Three passages, three. Ready? One. Two. Three. Yeah. Okay. That's much closer to our sample. I'm getting happy about that. So yeah, this is my paper tray. You usually, I think in my videos, 
see that I'm using a longer scarf tray. Um, it just accommodates a larger size and I just got a 10 foot tray and I haven't used it yet and we're excited about it. We're gonna bust that out like later in the year or next year, of course, but yeah. We're excited for 2024 because we get the 10 foot tray and we're gonna make some serious stuff happen with that. Got lots of ideas. Okay. Here comes the gold. The gold, the gold, the gold. Remember, not too much. Really subtle. More, more, more subtle, subtle, subtle. So yeah, the one's plastic broom corn. And then this one's natural broom corn. You know, like what broom makers use. I love broom makers. They make cool brooms out of this. I want, I want those. <laughs> anyway, not to get distracted. Yeah, I need my guide here. Okay, pinhead size gold flex. Pinhead size, no bigger than a pin. Yeah, even subtle. Just little pep talks here. Reminding myself, even and subtle. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna open that inside of their book in that fine binding and just see little shimmers of gold and turquoise. Oh, beautiful, epic. Okay. Going to get my paper. I have this cotton paper. Beautiful. Very good. I've treated it with aluminum sulfate. I flattened it. Flattening is so important. I don't know, I see a little a little buckle on it. Hopefully that doesn't give me an air bubble. What happens sometimes? It's a very careful process for laying down this sheet of paper. If you go all willy-nilly, uh, you're gonna run into some little defects. And now I'm just you don't get that little edge well you get some serious little irritation <laughs> happening okay make sure all those edges get printed okay we're done we can breathe and hopefully celebrate this piece of paper that's about to happen. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm liking that. I am liking that. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, that's pretty on par here. Yeah, okay. So I got this and now I'm gonna rinse this. And then we're gonna sign off. Just got some little migrating pigments going on. They're coming off as I'm rinsing. That's fine. Usually they do. And we're gonna wrap up right after this. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed our second live stream. Feels like the first. Kind of is the first. 
The first was just a test, but this is like a real first. Live stream. Hope to have more. Hope you liked the information and the little behind the scenes views of how this is done without fancy editing. This little real live stuff here today, right now. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. Much love to y'all.